since the start of the 2024 season, Yuki Tsunoda has been one of the standout drivers. In the New Look RB team, he's taken to the track and shown that he can continue to put in performances in a not so competitive car. But the Japanese driver is still completely overlooked by the Red Bull higher ups, with no sign of him becoming a fully fledged Red Bull driver anytime soon. After finding himself in a similar situation to his old teammate, what does the future of Yuki Tsunoda look like? Let's get into it. Even though he's part of the Red Bull ecosystem and has stood out amongst the midfield drivers so far this year, with only Nico Hülkenberg looking like he's likely to score points regularly as well, Yuki Tsunoda has been in Q3 two out of the three races so far with a car that, let's face it, isn't good enough to be in the top 10, showing that he's really starting to click with this car and is getting the best out of the machinery that he's been given. Outperforming his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, who's seen as the more likely candidate for promotion to Red Bull Racing due to his history history with the team, despite the fact that Yuki Tsunoda's average qualifying advantage is nearly half a second, even considering Daniel Ricciardo's disqualified Q1 lap time last time out in Australia. And I know that he didn't score points in the first two races due to various factors, but a 7th place finish in Australia got him some well-deserved points and kind of put him on the number of points he deserves so far this season. When you compare that to where he started, Sonoda's Formula 1 development has seen him massively improve from that disappointing rookie season to the point where he's now seen as not quite a championship caliber driver, but he's consistent and dependable and definitely worth his place on the Formula 1 grid. And with all of that improvement, Yuki Tsunoda has even expressed hope himself for consideration that one day he might get a Red Bull racing seat. And to be fair to him, you'd think Yuki Tsunoda's strong start to the 2024 season, along with all the speculation around Sergio Perez from last year, that would at least prompt some speculation from the Red Bull team about his promotion to Red Bull racing. And I know that Helmut Marko has offered the Japanese driver some praise in recent weeks, but it still doesn't feel like he's seriously considered to replace Sergio Perez. Because on the reverse of those positive performances, Sonoda's temperament is still a big factor. You only have to look at his actions during the Bahrain Grand Prix slowdown lap to know that Yuki Sonoda can get a little bit hot under the helmet from time to time. And Yuki has admitted himself that he struggles controlling his emotions and acknowledges that that is something that needs to improve and he needs his emotional control to be better to avoid similar issues in the future. But that's been the case since Yuki Sonoda's first year in Formula One. And that's one of Yuki's faults in his driving that has been very slow to progress, if it has progressed at all. Because when I was thinking about it, there were two moments from last year that popped straight to mind from Spain and Mexico, where the Alpha Tauri looked really good and Sonoda was battling hard on the verge of points, only to throw it all away. In Spain, he was trying to defend a point scoring position from Zhou Guangyu, who was behind and forced the Chinese driver off the track, picking up a well-deserved penalty. And then in Mexico, it was the opposite. This time he was on the attack. Sonoda found himself stuck behind Oscar Piastri. And even though he had better pace, he just couldn't get past the Australian. And you could feel the frustration build as once again, he went for an overly aggressive move that didn't pay off and cost him a really good result, which leaves a lot of uncertainty around Yuki Tsunoda's ability to perform under high stress on track situations where he is put under a lot of pressure. And therefore it feels like Tsunoda's emotional control issues are seen by Red Bull as a fundamental flaw that really blows his chances of promotion to the main Red Bull team anytime soon. So with a spot of Red Bull unlikely, it feels like Tsunoda is getting towards the crossroads that Pierre Gasly found himself in a few years ago. He's definitely good enough to stay on the Formula 1 grid and I can't see him losing his seat at RB anytime soon, but to progress and as the seasons tick on, it feels like he does need to escape the Red Bull hamster wheel. And I'll be honest, the reason I wanted to make this quick video is because I love getting involved in the discussions with you guys as part of this community, and I want to know where you think Yuki Tsunoda will actually end up, because I'm just not sure. The obvious is Aston Martin, the main reason that Yuki Tsunoda was fast-tracked onto the Formula 1 grid in a Red Bull seat was due to his connection with the Honda team, but Honda's influence at Red Bull is fading as they transition to their own Ford-backed powertrains for the 2026 season and beyond. However, Honda aren't disappearing off the grid completely. Instead, they're moving from Red Bull over to Aston Martin and partnering with the green team for the regulation changes in 2026. So with Honda moving, it makes sense that they would use their influence and want to bring in one of their own drivers. 
but I just can't see a space opening up for him anytime soon. Fernando Alonso doesn't look like he's slowing down and I can't see him moving. I know that there have been a few rumors of Fernando Alonso moving on, but I just think Aston Martin will do everything possible to keep hold of Fernando. Plus, is Yuki Tsunoda a Fernando Alonso replacement? Is he that caliber of driver? Probably not. And then, of course, Lance Stroll keeps getting linked with the WEC project. But again, I feel like that's just a long way off happening still. But even so, that made me think, well, maybe he could just stay at RB until he gets the chance to replace Alonso or Stroll at Aston Martin a few years down the line, which doesn't feel like the worst option in the world, considering the RB team has had a big shakeup recently and is getting closer to the Red Bull team, so should see big improvements in terms of their performance. But if he stays at RB too long, he could find himself completely stuck. And then it's just a matter of time until Red Bull will undoubtedly chuck him out of the team. If he isn't going up into the main Red Bull team and he isn't there to please Honda, then there's no real reason for Red Bull to keep him around long term, especially if there are other drivers that start to come through that they're more interested in. I mean, Liam Lawson looks absolutely nailed on to get a seat, but also Isaac Hadjar in Formula 2 is looking pretty good. He had a few free practice sessions last year, and a solid start to this season in the junior categories, so Yuki Tsunoda can't just tread water at RB forever. So that got me thinking a little bit outside of the box, and I know that I said Yuki Tsunoda's situation was similar to Pierre Gasly's, where he might feel stuck in the RB system, but could he just literally follow Pierre Gasly to Alpine? We know that the ex Alpha Tauri pair still have a great relationship, something that Gasly and Ocon definitely do not have, but with Pierre's fan base being so much larger than Esteban's, it does feel like if one of the French drivers were to leave, it would probably be Ocon, and if that seat next to Gasly does become available, the Frenchman would definitely push to be alongside his Japanese best friend once again. And considering right now Alpine probably have the least pull in the driver market that they have ever had, if they could pick up Yuki Tsunoda, I feel like that would be a great signing. He's a young driver who's standing out amongst the midfield drivers and is going to continue to improve over the next few seasons, whilst from Yuki's side of things, he gets to be back in a team with Gasly, but also he gets to go to a works team where he can help build something and feel more part of it than just being in the second Red Bull team. Or I could see Yuki Tsunoda following in the footsteps of another ex-Red Bull member of the grid making a move to Williams. Because let's face it, Logan Sargent is holding onto his seat by a thread and he already looks destined to be shoved out of the Williams team at the end of the year. Whilst Alex Albon is one of the hottest prospects on the Formula 1 grid right now after a stunning 2023 season, meaning that he's being linked away from his Williams seat constantly as well. If Williams do end up having to replace one or even both of their drivers, Yuki Tsunoda is a great option. Obviously, optimally, he'd go in alongside Alex Albon because that's a driver he's worked closely with when Alex was the Red Bull reserve and he was just coming through. And I feel like they've already got a great relationship with one another. Plus, you get a really good driver pairing out on track. And then from Yuki's perspective, he can do what Alex did. He can cut ties with Red Bull, meaning he has the freedom to decide his own future. And maybe Yuki Tsunoda takes those steps and starts to get linked with some of the teams that Alex is being linked with right now. So going into his home Grand Prix this weekend, knowing that the 2025 driver market is set to explode at some point this season, where do you think Yuki Tsunoda should be looking towards for his future? At the moment, he stands out as one of the best drivers at the back of the pack, but can anyone realistically make the move for the Japanese driver? And if you're interested in who I think will end up in the Red Bull seat instead of Yuki Tsunoda in the near future, I made this video here. So click that link and I'll see you over there.